Hey everyone, today we are in Bali and we came to meet Dan, the founder of Space Available, a museum entirely dedicated to plastic recycling and precious plastic. We're gonna sit down, have a chat and learn more about what they do. Hello. Hello. Hey Dan. Welcome to the Museum of Space Available. How's it going? It's going well, yeah, how are you? Very, very well. All right, so here we are with Dan from Space Available. Super pumped to be here and learn more about what they do uh, here in Bali. So I'm gonna give it to you. Hey, my name is Daniel Mitchell. I'm the creative director here at Space Available Studios. Uh, so, so I'm from England. I've been living in Bali for almost nine years now. I'm a creative director, um, working in the realms of circular design. Um, as I mentioned previously, I was the creative director here at Potato Head, which is a hospitality lifestyle group, which has been on a fantastic journey towards zero waste for the past seven years. So it's been really amazing to be part of that. And today I have my own studio, space available, um, and, and our mission is to make space for nature, and we do that by extracting the waste from nature. So Space Available, we started in the pandemic in 2020, um, and up to date we've recycled with our partners robberies here in Indonesia uh, over 3 million waste plastic bottle caps and uh, waste plastic items. Uh, now managed to get our design objects all around the world in different distribution networks and stores, um, as well as here in Indonesia. And for us, it's really important that we can kind of tell the story and tell the message of what we're doing. So we've created a museum here in Bali called the Museum of Space Available. Um, and today we're literally living on a plastic planet. It's in the ecosystem, it's everywhere. Um, and recent studies have shown that it's now in the human system, it's in our blood, it's affecting our cells. It's, you know, are we destined to turn ourselves into plastic people? That's the sort of message that we're sending. And what we're showing is not only the history, but the future and how we can work with the waste plastic we already have here, which is a lot. And this exhibition very much tells that story and explores uh, alternatives to the future. Um, so the great thing about having the gallery is that we can really kind of give context behind what we're doing and uh, look at the sort of reason why plastic exists. In the beginning, plastic was made as a cure for overconsumption. You know, the ivory trade, there's a lot of natural resources getting extracted. Somebody actually invented plastic as a sustainable material of the future. Some of these screens actually show advertisements from the 1950s of promoting plastic as a real luxury product. Plastic was celebrated because it is a great material, but unfortunately it's, it shouldn't be made in, for single use. It should be really within a circular system, very carefully managed. We're here to say, what can we do with the waste that already exists? And you know, part of the Precious Plastic community have been doing this for a long time. They've inspired a lot of the work that we do here. We work very closely with a lot of different uh, Precious Plastic workshops. And wh what we bring is a very much more of a design edge. So you know, our mission is to make space for nature and to create a more circular future. And we believe collaborating with communities within the precious plastic uh, ecosystem is something which we feel uh, from, from our angle as a design studio, we can amplify the message further. Yeah, so as part of the exhibition, we created a series of uh, NFTs, sort of digital artworks. And again, the kind of, the exhibition is called Plastic People. And we've literally created Plastic People who are essentially bags of trash walking around. And we're sort of asking the question is this is what human race is destined to become. The sale of these NFTs actually go towards um, building our recycling center, which we, we partnered with Robberies, who's a uh, precious plastic, part of the precious plastic community here in Indonesia. I think I know this machine. <laughs> yeah, you guys know well, you know, we, we, uh, we've got your plans and they're working beautifully, you know. A big part of the kind of message is kind of people want to know how we made it. So, so whenever we show people the machines, People are just fascinated. They want to know more about the process, you know, how the plastic goes in, how it shreds, how we get it down into a sheet and how it's made into a product. So, so wherever we go and whenever we do pop-ups, whenever we do workshops or anything, we always bring in the machine. So we have a, we have a shredder, we, we also have an um, extruder. It's a real kind of team effort across the, the entire world, starting from you guys at Precious Plastic, right the way down to us implementing it here in Indonesia. And yeah, it's, it's really great to be part of the movement. So music has always been a big part of my life. Um, you know, kind of growing up in England and then moving to London, um, I'd always been, you know, DJing, you know, going to various festivals and club nights and that sort of thing. The title of the exhibition is called Plastic People and Plastic People was actually a really sort of 
um, legendary nightclub in London, which is unfortunately closed down. So there's a, there's a subtle reference to the kind of music culture that I come from. So for example, this is a Technics 1210, which is a, the industry standard turntable for DJs. And we make the recycled um, plinths that, that, uh, that they can sit in. So this, this obviously looks beautiful, but it also acts as a kind of isolation method to stop the, the turntable from vibrating. Um, and we also create things like record boxes for storing records as well, um, and have lots of sort of small music related items in everything we do. We make a lot of uh, homeware products um, and lifestyle products from, from the waste plastic. Uh, the method that we use is we, we use sheets. We shred the plastic, um, it's either pressed or it's put in the oven. And then when we get those sheets, we then use a CNC and we just cut everything out using CNC. So we design our own shapes for like desk trays, you know, it could be an incense holder, kind of small objects, which we use as paperweights to kind of tell the story of what we're doing from a yin yang perspective or, you know, anarchy kind of rebelling against the plastic waste crisis. These have been, for us as a small company, they've been very successful. Get these within a lot of the kind of top tier lifestyle stores around the world. And it's really starting a conversation now and because this plastic movement is just growing and growing and everybody wants to be part of it. And it's just, it's great to be part of the movement and hopefully starting conversation and inspire people to build a better future. Yeah, so this is a, um, a chair that we made um, back in 2021, last year. And we collaborated with Peggy Goo, who's a very well-known music musician and DJ. Peggy had a great idea of actually using it as a record storage chair, which gives it a sort of unique music slant to what we're doing. This chair, like online, it really kind of blew up and it really put our brand on the map as well. Um, and it just really kind of showcases what we can do through the power of collaboration, but also kind of using this beautiful material which everybody just gravitates towards. The fact that it's made from 20 kilograms of waste recycled bottle tops. Um, and yeah, it's, it's now sitting in uh, different museums around the world. Hey everyone, for those of you new to the channel, we are Precious Plastic and we design and develop recycling machines to enable anyone out there to start recycling. Just like them, at Space Available, we have thousands of organizations all around the world recycling plastic through Precious Plastic. So if this is your cup of tea, make sure to like and subscribe so you can get notified for every new video coming out on a weekly basis. All right. Thank you. Really phenomenal. You're really taking plastic recycling to a whole new level. Plastic really trying to showcase the value and really taking it you know, up a notch. I will be a bit curious on the process of setting this up. How did it all work out? Please tell me how you put up the massive sign out there because that looks amazing. Yeah, so I mean, I've been working with uh, plastic for a number of years um, because we built a, 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 like a precious plastic workshop space in Potato Head. And, and also uh, Green School here in Bali, they had machines quite early on. Um, so I've kind of been involved in it for a while. And then during the pandemic of 2020, when we closed, I kind of took a step back and decided, actually, I'm going to create my own studio, uh, which is space available. We wanted to do a real deep dive into the plastic waste crisis and how we can use plastic waste as a raw material and showcase the power of you know, what can be done with radical recycling. And it was right in the middle of the pandemic and st like we, we, had, we wanted to try and get in some of the best lifestyle stores around the world. Kai I was working with who was doing sales, he, he was sort of saying, well, actually, it's right in the middle of the pandemic. No one's buying new brands. No one's going to reply, but we'll try, you know? And he sent it out and then lo and behold, like a couple of days later, like everybody replied and all of these amazing stores were like, yeah, yeah, we love this. The kind of plastic story, we're really into it. We'll let, you know, we're going to buy the collection. So we were, you know, it was really exciting because we were like, wow, okay, everybody's buying the stuff. And as a small new startup, it was quite big for us to try and actually make everything. Uh -huh. um, it was a little bit challenging because we had lots of samples that kind of looked okay, but weren't really ready to go and sell for just shop window in London. So we had a really, it was very good. It was very exciting, but it was, we were obviously quite kind of worried about like, how are we going to pull this off. So we work very closely with, with uh, robberies here in Indonesia who who part of the precious plastic community. And we sort of got together and we're like, okay, how can we refine this product further? Because right now there's too much inconsistencies. You know, there was lots of sort of, you know, we're all learning, right? We're all experimenting. Yeah. Um, but we can't tell that to these amazing stores. Um, so, so, so really we kind of got, got together and built the infrastructure and really refined the product together with, with uh, Niam and sort of managed to make it work. And we've got a really good system now. We've now ended up in like 20 different countries around the world. We're in the kind of premium lifestyle stores. And it's really uh, because the design is what people are attracted to. They like, 
they're like, oh, that chair looks beautiful. And then they go up to it and they're like, oh, wow, that's made from like 15 kilograms of waste plastic that was saved from the ocean. Even in the past, even in the past year, and you've been doing this a long, long time, it's the, 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 the awareness is just growing so much. How did it change over the last five, six years? Like the relationship of people towards plastic recycling and plastic in general? Because general. I mean, when we first started in 2014, almost no one talked about it, right? And then everyone sort of woke up and be like, wow, we have this plastic problem. But now, you know, it's been seven, eight years. It seems like people are kind of uh, assimilating that. I wonder mm. what you uh, perceive here in the store. Well, I think, I mean, in 2014, when we decided, okay, we need to really take some action here, like, like a potato head that was just literally plastic, it was heartbreaking, really. I mean, the amount of plastic that was coming up, it looked like a tsunami had came in and it was like a meter high of plastic. You couldn't even walk on the beach. And, you know, there was definitely a few people doing it, like um, in terms of like trying to push the awareness, like there was Bye Bye Plastic Blags, Gary, who now has Sung I Watch. But it wasn't, there was no design element to it. It was just amazing people campaigning, let's actually like clean up our own backyard first. But I think Potato Head really inspired a lot of people. And, you know, and obviously we were inspired by, you know, you guys and Green School, that network of people that have been doing things. It just slowly started building. And I think the sort of consciousness of, of, of everybody was starting to change, thinking more about sustainability. You know, we can all just see the plastic everywhere. It's like, you know, doesn't matter what you believe about anything. Um, like you can literally see plastic everywhere you go and that's not a good thing. We did great collaborations with people within the cultural space like musicians like Peggy Goo and Alex Olsen who's a really legendary kind of skater and kind of got into a different market that maybe pre Precious Plastic Community maybe weren't already in. So, so it kind of it like it went straight into the middle of the kind of fashion world basically. I mean looking at your products they look phenomenal but the price tag is it's yeah. right up there right? It's, 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 yeah. it's pricey right? And yeah. It's great you know we We've been campaigning forever that plastic should not be cheap. Yeah. Because the fact that it's cheap makes it that people waste it so much more easier. What a lot of people don't know is that waste plastic, and, and it, it's very small, it's all kind of artisanal, the approach, right? But it actually, it costs money, you know? It's like, it's so, and so time. obviously, and, and time, which is the big thing. So just to and make, just to make one sheet, for example, there's so much labor that goes into that. Then, so, so we're making the sheet, we're then having the CNC cut out of the sheet, then we get it, but then we wholesale it. So we're not going direct to consumer. So then there has to be a, a margin for the wholesaler and then we have to do the logistics. So by the time you count it all up, it's actually, we're not, we're not just being like greedy and yeah. saying everything has to be expensive. It actually just does cost money to make good things, you know? All right, and that's where my not so fancy tech died on me. I think the battery overheated or something and it died. So Dan closed off the interview by again stressing how important it is for him and space available to be part of the Fresh Plastic community and how much value they drive from that. Now I'm totally grateful to have had the chance to go to Space Available here in Bali and learn more about how they take plastic waste and take it onto a whole new level, really bringing it onto the luxury scene. I hope you learned something from this video today and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!